Hi everyone, welcome to the uh, webinar for the Fundamentals of Kitchen, Fire Suppression. What we're going to do is just wait until we get all of the participants available. We know that we're going out uh, to a big, you know, it's a global audience and we're really excited to have you with us today. So we'll leave it a few minutes and uh, let the numbers creep up. Yeah, so do you want to do some introductions? Yeah, so uh, my name's Ed Chivers. I'm the Global Product and Certification Director for React on Fire Suppression Systems. Yeah, and I'm Edward Barnes. I'm the Chief Technical Officer uh, of React on uh, Fire Suppression as well. So, uh, yeah, glad to have you all on board today. Um, it's going to be quite a unique um, subject today. It's a quite a specialist system that we offer, and it's a very specialist application for them, but it's something that we see a growing demand of um, lots of systems sold internationally and, and in the UK for these types of systems. So, yeah, looking forward to showing some good videos as well. That we've got um, some test videos, some, uh, as I said, in those joining us who have been on the previous um, webinars, uh, just to start to see some of the more um, uh, oriented uh, or sort of augmented reality videos, the animations we've got that show how the system works. So we're going to see that later on um, in the uh, presentation. So um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be quite. A, we'll try and keep to time as we usually do here at Reactor. Um, so we've got loads of people joining us at the moment. So we'll give it another thirty seconds. Yeah. It's worth probably giving an update on the next webinar that we've got coming as well. Yeah, um, at the end of this presentation, we will give details of the next webinar, and that's going to be on power generation. Um, if you think more your, your wind turbines and energy storage systems, so uh, that's a very uh, a popular one at the moment and uh, is growing uh, uh, exponentially. So we really want to make sure people are aware of how to protect those systems. So. We'll be bringing, bringing that online on the 12th of August for the, that webinar. Um, but um, yeah, and again, it's probably worth saying. So uh, format of our webinars, um, we keep it nice and timely. And what we'll do is if you guys leave um, some questions throughout the presentations in the Q&A area uh, located at the bottom of your screen, we'll pick up those Q&As at, uh, at the end of the um, presentation. Um, if you put them in the Q&A section at the bottom rather than the chat, um, then um, everyone can see the Q&As um, as we go through them. I think last time we had some in chat, some in Q&A, and then people asking why, where were these questions being asked and they couldn't see them in the questions and answers. So we've sort of, uh, we thought we'd add that at the start just to make sure that everyone's clear uh, where they're going. So um, shall we carry on? Um, and get the presentation started. Yeah, I think, yeah, we've got a few more people to join, but we, we'll make a start and, uh, you know, the early stages of the presentation are more of an introduction and as we move on, we get a bit more details, so uh, people may be joining later on. And if any of you have got any technical issues on the feed, then just drop them in the chat and the team are, are monitoring the feed at the moment just to make sure um, if we get any technical issues. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen um, and we get this presentation underway. So uh, let's, um, let's bring this up. Okie dokie. All right. So over to you, Ed. Okay. So as I mentioned earlier, thank you for joining this uh, webinar. We do appreciate there's uh, a lot of different time zones involved and it may be uh, really early or really late for you, uh, but we hope you can come away after this webinar and have a much better understanding of the, the fundamentals and the essentials of kitchen fire suppression. And this is, to be, uh, to be clear, is about the residential and domestic kitchen fire suppression, not the, the full scale uh, commercial restaurant systems. Uh, so what we do is we make a start and uh, we, we talk through you know, what is an automatic residential kitchen fire suppression system and we, we, we will go through the, the parts of that and on the right you can see a nice, this is part of our animations we do, but a nice uh, three uh, sets of images of the really the start of the fire and then the agent tackling it and what it looks like afterwards and got a lovely representation there. But 
in a nutshell, a, uh, it's a system that can deliver firefighting fire performance to extinguish Class F fires found on the residential cooker hob. So the important thing here is the Class F, and I'll go into that more later. Uh, for it to be automatic, it needs an autonomous uh, detection system, which is part of the react reactron system, and that means there's no human intervention. We then apply these in local application, and more often than not, they're pre-engineered, which means that it's a package that doesn't need any hydraulic calculations or designs for your application. It's uh, out of the box. As long as you stay in the parameters, you have a system. I was just going to say on that point, which is quite crucial because there'll be some people on, on the webinar thinking, you know, if I've got, does it cover one hob? Does it cover two hobs? Does it cover six hobs? So when you're specifying the system, uh, our distributors will tell us the size of the protected area. And then generally that will then dictate to which pre, um, predetermined system we would ship um, to be fitted uh, on the right spec. That's it. We, we take away all of that worry um, and detail from anyone. It's just a, select it and you have a system that can protect it so uh, and then yeah in the simplest form these are systems that have a means of detection uh, extinguishing agent storage with the cylinder and then a delivery mechanism which is a hose and a nozzle and then the agents that are used in these pre-engineered systems are specifically designed and tested to be effective against that risk which in this instance is a class f so we move on, uh, we go what, what a typical automatic fire suppression system looks like. And on the right, we've got a nice picture of a uh, one kilo system from Reacton. Uh, it's an indirect system, but essentially it's a, an extinguishing agent storage system, which is a cylinder containing the, the agent. Then we have a detection system, which you can see in the image below, which is the red tube that is rooted around um, the, the, the hood there. And then we have a distribution network, which is a flexible uh, stainless steel hose, which goes to a nozzle. And then the actuation system is our patented CTX valve, uh, which is a pressure loss uh, function. And when, when that tube bursts, it then uh, lifts the piston up in that valve and delivers the agent. When we talk about ancillary functions and equipment, this can be as simple as a pressure switch, which can go to a sounder or a beacon. It can even go to the building management system or a third party fire alarm. And we can also shut down gas and uh, any electric to the hob and fans and the associated equipment. Thank you. So one of the key reasons, and this is, you know, will be from a, a sales point of view as well, but why, why residential kitchens uh, need automatic fire suppression? The main purpose of everything, the reason why we act on it started and why we keep pushing so hard, is to save lives um, and the, the, you know, protect your property, but your critical assets as well. And in, in this instance, it's typically a property. Um, we know that cooking with oils and fats, they're left unattended, with heat, they will catch fire. It's not, you know, they may or may not, they will if they're continuously heated. And you'll see some great videos of that later on. And I can, I can add to this story quite uniquely because um, when I was at my first year university placement in the UK, uh, I had a friend who did exactly this, um, came in, decided he wanted some chips, put a chip pan fire on, put some oil in a pan, left, went off, went to his room, fell asleep, and burned down two blocks of accommodation units in the university building. So I can directly relate to the problem this creates. Um, and actually that's one of the biggest markets we see for systems uh, is in university and student accommodation. Um, it's a particular risk um, for probably a number of reasons we can think about. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a good example as to where we've seen um, these systems being installed. Yeah, and that, that really directly links to that question there where you know, homes, uh, they, 
when we say homes, that's a sort of a generic term there. It could be student accommodation or anything else, but the home is full of distractions. It's very, we all know, and we've all done it, it's very easy to get distracted. There may be somebody comes to the door or you're watching TV and you're only nipping into the kitchen. There's lots of distractions, so it's easily, easily done. Then really, you know, we, we talk about fire extinguishers and blankets. We see that some households have those, but you need to be there to actually use those. And again, not everyone has a class F fire extinguisher there. They may have a water one or something else, which will actually make this a lot worse. So um, yeah, people need to know what they're doing and have the right equipment. And this one here is, is more applicable to your uh, student accommodations and uh, sort of newer buildings where the kitchens are like open plan and they're actually part of the escape route. And really you need to make sure that you can escape. You need to have some means of protecting that escape route. And this is an ideal way of doing it. So do you want to do an intro? I think we're going to have an issue with sound, aren't we? Where they're not going to be able to hear this. Yeah, um, I, I think I can recap on some of the bits that are in okay. here, but this is quite a long video, so we will be skipping it, but it really is uh, just showcasing an apartment fire, which has started in the kitchen. Uh, and it, uh, the, the actual um, overview has been provided by uh, one of the fire chiefs there, and he's just saying how easily that these can start. And really one of the things that he's mentioning there is the actual size and the energy from the fire is, uh, is growing extremely fast uh, given the, the class F fires that are there. Um, just for anyone who is in um, the US or anything, the class K is a, a term that you will hear as well. In uh, Europe, we say class F, but they are the same uh, hazard. They're just the terminology is different. Um, what you can see is the, the huge impact um, uh, for, for the area, but it's not just that apartment that has the issue. That can spread extremely quickly, especially if there isn't any other, uh, additional fire protection. Um, but what they're saying is even though the smoke alarm went off and people managed to, uh, were alerted to it, by, by the time that they had that alert, it was out of control and it spread and no one could even get into the room. So it, it is extremely uh, um, violent when these class F fires happen. And this video we've got here, we, we'll probably let this one actually play out. I think it's two minutes long, just from heating up an oil or a fat and then it auto ignites. And then you can see how quickly it grows and it just takes over. And I think, and I think that's something that, that um, and it, th this depends as well on the residential side, especially for students. Is um, a lot of us in the UK now with all the health concerns, the uh, the fitness concerns are unlikely, you know, are, are less likely to be um, filling pans up with oil to to do deep frying in. But obviously, certain cultures and and certain in certain regions of the world, it's still very much the way that the food is cooked. So, although to some people it can seem unusual that that people would have a, a pan filled with oil, given what's changed, is is depending on on the background of. Uh, the culture or where the kitchen is around the world and it, you know again at universities you have quite a diverse um, quite a diverse um, collection of people from around the world so so it's, it, again it can where we think it might not be a risk it is a risk but it's a risk because of the persons and, uh, and their background about how they cook even in a, a residential kitchen so people underestimate the amount of stored energy that's contained within oil and fat um, and as you can see you know, four minutes into the video now, um, and about three and a half minutes post auto ignition, um, the, the the amount of energy that's still coming from that pan, and obviously what happens is the fire as it grows in size and grows in heat, um, continues to heat the unburnt oil, um, and you have a, a sort of a chain reaction where the oil starts to combust easier, and then you can see the size of this fire starting just from that single pan of oil. And to put that into perspective, you imagine 
you put something on, you say, oh, I'm just nipping out, it'll be five minutes. That's what can happen in five minutes with a power fire. So, you know, it, it really shows it can get out of hand extremely quickly. And for someone to try and tackle that with uh, a kitchen blanket or um, a fire extinguisher, a lot of people will try and just evacuate yeah. because of the smoke, you know, so, uh, and, and the energy from that fire, you can't get too close. No, and I think the thing about that, um, like we were talking about is, is you obviously have building protection systems in some circumstances, like sprinklers, um, and, and more so now coming onto the market water mist systems. And the issue you've got is that you, you're still gonna have damage to the cooker, the cooker hood, um, and more importantly, what we're trying to protect is we're also trying to protect the fire coming up into the ducting in a residential environment. So unlike um, kitchen or commercial kitchens that have an obligation in most insurance, um, in most insurance settings where ductwork needs to be cleaned and maintained to be free of fat, um, that's not a requirement in uh, a lot of, well, it's not a requirement of residential homes and a lot of um, universities also, it's not a requirement because it's built around a residential um, principle. So you'll often find intricate ductwork in some of the installations we go into and it's plastic lined ductwork, isn't it? You know, it's, it's not metal ductwork, it's plastic lined like you would traditionally see in a house. So we're very much about catching this before it causes any damage and has the opportunity to spread past that, that yeah, point. So Definitely. And even in the testing that we've done, uh, again, we go through all the, the we'll come on to that later, but all the different sort of alternatives. And there's a lot where you have a real large sort of pre-burn time. And the system is always going to activate a lot quicker than that pre-burn time. But we found in the pre-burn time, it, it, if there is associated plastic um, ductwork or anything like that, that can get seriously compromised and spread. So you want to detect and extinguish as fast as possible. Um, on this slide, we're, we're rattled through these because uh, We've got a few bits to get through, but these are uh, some striking facts and stats around uh, cooking at home and the fires associated with them. And uh, we've got 470 cooking fires attended every day, $1.2 billion in property damage, 31% started when equipment was left unattended, 53% of non-fatal injuries uh, occurred when people tried to control the fire themselves. So that's a, a very uh, important one to take away there, where I mentioned about the the fire blankets and extinguishers. Is, we, we encourage people to have that, we want them to have that. We're just saying there's a lot of people who aren't aware how to apply them correctly. And again, you can get a lot of injuries from it. And then the last one there, 66% fire started due to hot oils and cooking materials igniting. So lots of stats there to take away. Um, this one here is really where we literally just mentioned about there being uh, you know, automatic sprinklers or even water mist systems in, your, in, in those rooms. They're great, they do uh, provide automatic fire protection, but it, it doesn't often have any automatic shutdown associated to the, the kitchen hot. It won't provide localized suppression. Um, it, won't, it allows a lot of damage because it's, it's Really, it's uh, covering the entire area when really the fire is only underneath the cooker hood. Um, and then uh, we, we look at it with the, the extinguishers and everything. Yes, you can provide localised fire suppression and minimise the damage to the kitchen, but it won't give you 24-7 protection because you've got to be there to apply it and it needs to be applied correctly. So you can see when it's a fire suppression system, it's is correct, it's there, it's designed to do that, that job, that's its sole purpose, and that's why it provides the best protection. Okay, so we'll hit the next slide. I think, um, I don't think people can see us on this particular one, so I was just gonna, uh, guys, I'm just gonna stop the share at this point and um, reshare the screen, so just bear with us. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why that's, why that's, uh, why that's happening. Well, that might have fixed it. There we go. Okay. So, okay. Um, so now we're getting into a bit more of the detail about the actual React on the system. And we've got two examples on the right hand side of the screen there the one kilo system and the two kilo system. Again, all completely pre engineered, 
comes with the hose, the nozzle, uh, the detection tube, everything there. They offer rapid fire knockdown, simple cleanup, uh, superior protection for class F. It's a class F um, you know, wet chemical that is in, in the unit. They're self-contained, extremely small as well. So the fire stopping power of this agent we use is incredible. And we're only talking about one to two kilos on these systems. Um, small footprint, so it makes it really nice and easy for you to locate those nearby in a cooker, um, in a uh, cupboard. Um, and that means they're ideal for uh, you know, original equipment um, or retrofit. So it really uh, opens up the, the possibilities with these. Um, and as mentioned at the start, they're pre-engineered, so no calculations or designs required. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, one of the things we, we have brought up previously is the fact that the system component size and, and how the kit system's engineered is it can be engineered for retrofit, which is, which is a large proportion of the applications that we see. Um, but we also do a lot of work with architects, building designers, and, and a lot of these systems are fitted during initial fit out stage yeah. as well. So, yeah. And then obviously we talked about that. Already, so, yeah. okay, so we'll just keep on. So this is a slide a bit more about the, the, the actual chemical that we, the, the wet chemical we use. And it's a specific uh, class F wet chemical from our, one of our partners, 3 F, and it's, it's really it's designed for the class F fire, but you, it is very important to understand it does provide a class A and B uh, fire rating as well. So it is a true ABF uh, product. Um, and I'll go into a few more details about how it works below where really it works, yeah, it reacts with the heat, the energy from that fire, the burning class F, and then it creates a thick soapy crust and a barrier on top, and that separates the, the flammable vapors reacting with the oxygen. Um, and it, 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 that's where it stops the, the reignition. So once it's deployed and it goes through that process, uh, you, you've got a complete system. So fast fire knockdown and reignition protection. Cool. And uh, this, this image here, these are, these are uh, easily found on our website as well. We have the, the interactive images on there and it just helps people visualize uh, the system in its, uh, in its environment. And what we've got here is a, a small system protecting the cooker hood there. And really we can hover over each one of these bits and talk about the parts that come with so, it. The system, shall we? All right, it's a bit fiddly. Hang on. There we go. So, as we mentioned, we've got the one or two kilo pre engineered system. It's a cylinder that contains the, the extinguishing agent. Then we have an end of line. This basically allows you to charge the system, but also have uh, monitoring of the pressure wherever it's convenient for you to do so and that's that's quite crucial because one of the options that uh, a lot of distributors and uh, end users take is um, there's a various options that will come on to the monitoring side but if the system is opted to not have any system monitoring um, what we do is we locate these or distributors can locate these in a position where uh, a maintainer a handyman of uh, the, if it's in a university or if it's a proper residential kitchen, the homeowner can clearly see that the system is active um, and without fault. Yeah. So that's that. And then we have the detection tube. The next slide we'll go into a bit more detail about that detection tube because uh, we've done quite a few webinars now. And one of the questions we do get asked quite a lot is how the detection works. And, uh, we uh, naively uh, just assume people would know about the, the detection tube, uh, but we, we've got a slide uh, on, the, on the next one to, to go through that. Then we have our specialist uh, nozzle. Uh, this has been designed for this application. It even actually has a square profile discharge, which is the perfect size for the, the, the application. Um, and this disperses the agent in a controlled uh, predetermined pattern and rate. And it's completely stainless steel as well, including the cap, which is, um, you know, important. You know, in kitchens, everyone wants to have stainless steel. That is the, the norm. And I think the um, one of the things uh, with the type of with this type of system, and um, there's a 
there are obviously some alternatives on the market. And we, one of the great things about Reacton, uh, and some of the viewers on this video uh, from our previous webinars know this, is that the research and development and the engineering we do in-house is extremely extensive. And when, when, when comparing other systems and looking at other systems, is what you find with the nozzle is that people are using or, or other competitors are using nozzles that are simply off the shelf and then attaching it to their own system. And what we found during a lot of testing uh, of the application was the fact that um, the nozzles during their initial discharge were very narrow, so they were not covering the protected area very well, but also that um, the pressure from the nozzle was too high. So what that was doing was disturbing that barrier it was creating on the oil, but also um, actually splashing oil or moving oil um, around the pan. So we, the nozzle that um, we use is a specialist nozzle designed for us to our specifications that actually matches the pressure, the rate of decline of pressure from our, from our system, um, and that's engineered and tested and certified for that particular system size. And I think that was an important point because when we did that testing, um, you know, nozzles, uh, the nozzle played the most important part of the whole system uh, during testing. So, so yeah, it's totally bespoke to us, the nozzle. Yeah, and then we, we've got here is a simple pressure switch, but uh, what it could be connected to could be quite complicated. Uh, but we've got a nice uh, unit there, again, high IP rating and everything like that, um, but very easy to configure with uh, any building um, management, management system. systems or alarm systems. So. And, and there's a number of other, there's, there's obviously other things we do, so it's said building management systems, integration into building management systems, integration into um, actually shutting down the cooker hood that um, is directly above it, taking the power away from the cooker, shutting down gas, and then also um, coming on um, within the next couple of months is the remote monitoring. So uh, we'll offer a package where distributors and end users can have the facility to remotely monitor these systems for pressure and discharge, um, which obviously helps uh, because a lot of these systems in a commercial environment for uh, universities are often very high density. So they could be 300 to 400 rooms in a building uh, is not uncommon. And, um, and that enables the, the building maintainer to opt to have their systems monitored by us. So yeah, it's a good, it's a really good key accessory to the system. So, right, let's move on. So this slide here will cover, like I mentioned earlier, about the detection tube. And we've got a little video, which is, uh, it's looped. So um, you, you see it going through the process of it bursting. And in this instance, this is a direct uh, tube, which I won't go into detail now, but Basically, we're showing you what happens when it's heated up and how it activates the system. Yeah. But the, ma the main key takeaways for this is it's 100% pneumatic, so there's no electricity required to operate this. So it doesn't matter if you have a power cut in your building or anything like that. These are designed to work all the time. So no false alarms because the detection system isn't affected by dust or debris or even the smoke. You know, so it's... Uh, it's a very nice, reliable way of having fire detection without all those false alarms. It's robust and reliable, but is also sensitive. Uh, we've spent a lot of time, it was developed with NATO as well with our de uh, for the detection tube. We've shown a blue one there, but on the last point on this slide, we mentioned that there's actually, there's three different types that we use. There's a red, there's a blue, and there's a black, and they all have their own uh, unique properties. So uh, we could go into more detail about that uh, on your application, but for the systems that are used on the kitchens, we use the, the, the red or the blue tube, and uh, that's because that's the one that's been tested the most and is uh, given the, the most reliable and uh, best performance for that application. Um, it's probably worth noting as well, when you see the video in a minute, you'll see uh, contents come out of the the burst hole where the system is activated. That's not what happens on the kitchen system. Um, this is a different system, um, but it just gives you an idea. What we're looking at here is how quickly the tube reacts to heat and what you can expect to see at the heat point on the tube. Um, and then in the animation later, you'll see the full system activation. Yeah, and they said, said lightweight and very flexible. Um, 
and as you say, it uh, creates a detection point of wherever the location is tubed. So depending on, you know, again, the, the heat rise, so we've tested this extensively with ventilation on, ventilation off, um, different pan positions underneath hobs. Um, so again, it's by installing the tube, it gives you a, a very comprehensive detection measure that's not reliant on any electrics, not going to give you any false activation, but enables a really robust um, uh, a wide area for coverage as well. So we know that um, although, the, as you know, heat rises, with, depending on the pan position and depending on the airflow can change where the flame actually touches. So so we go to the video. Yeah. So just mute that. So what you can see here is there's a heat source and the tube is under pressure at, at the time and where it heats up it bursts and it creates like an effective nozzle. In this instance, like Ed mentioned, we're show, it's showing uh, an actual uh, extinguishing agent clock coming out. That isn't the case in the kitchen systems. It's just nitrogen coming out, uh, only a small amount. So. This is just to show you that. Yeah, so, and what we've got here is um, again, a lot of you may be familiar with this if you've been to our, uh, like the website or the YouTube channel or seen our LinkedIn posts. This is uh, an animation that we create in house, really just to, to showcase uh, the reactor and kitchen system uh, from start to finish. And, um, I don't, are we going to have sound on this? No, one? so we won't. We, we, we've had some problems in sound with previous webinars. So what I'll do is I'll get Ed just to talk through, you can talk through the components as we go. So That's it. So this, this video does have uh, um, narration on it, but what, what we're doing here is just showing it in its typical uh, application. And there's, there's call outs as we go along throughout this video. But this is a, uh, a nice, simple overview of a, a kitchen system on a, a four four burner hob and we have no more than a, a few meters of detection tube and here we have our, our kitchen system which is filled with the class f wet chemical we have our specialist nozzle which is stainless steel and we have the metal front aimed back again to minimize any any splashback from, from the discharge. Detection tube, again, rooted around, and then where that heats up, that will activate the system. And then when we come over to where it's installed into the cupboard, you can see it takes up hardly any space. Um, we've got an end of line, that's where we can charge the system, but also quickly check the pressure. Pressure switch, which connects to any uh, interfaces to provide alerts or shutdowns or anything like that. So very simple three core cable. And here we've got, like in the video before, a heat source. We've got an oil which is heated up, which will typically auto ignite, depending on the oil, around sort of three to 350 degrees centigrade. And as that heats up, it, it will obviously auto ignite and then heats up the detection tube, which bursts. And the pressure loss from that burst allows the system to activate. So the nozzle cap comes off and then the extinguishing agent is delivered. And there's a very fine balance of getting the right, um, right discharge of the agent. If it comes out too soft and is, in, is too fine, the energy and uh, everything from the fire won't allow it to get to the, to the base in time. Um, and then too hard, it won't be good. So we get, get that balance and it fills up any of the pans in either one of those locations. And then it, it creates that crust and then separates the flammable vapors and extinguishes it. So this is really, we'll go through the, the actual, how the system works. And you can see this is from our, our testing that we've done um, at Warrington Fire on the, on the system. And we uh, set, the pan up here and we heat it up and it, about 350, 380 degrees, it auto ignites. So there's a lot of energy in that uh, cooking oil. 
So that is why these fires are extremely violent and hard to put out. But when that catches fire, then radiant heat from that, it makes the tube, well, it bursts the tube, which then activates the, the system. So there's a valve on top of that cylinder with a piston in it. And when the pressure is relieved from the top, the piston moves up and it allows the agent to be delivered through the tube. And that's where the F, class F wet chemical is discharged and extinguishes the class F fire. And then, the, as you saw in the video, you have a pressure switch and that will change state from you know, being normally open or normally closed. And then that will then give a, a, a signal to allow you to shut down power, fans or gas or anything like that associated with your, your risk and alert people that there's been, you know, there's been a fire, it's been put out, but you, know, you need to call the fire brigade to go around, do a check and ventilate the area. So we want to work with uh, the fire brigades and uh, get people in there and get, well, get people out as quickly as possible, but also protect them, you know, because not everyone's aware that these fires happen. And I think that's, I think for us, the goal with the system is um, to offer a really cost effective system that provides um, a really robust response to a hot fire. Um, and that's what we've done, you know, again, going back to the components Ed was talking about is, uh, the components that you see here are featured on other air, on other systems. So on our vehicle systems, there's components here that have been durability tested to, to withstand incredible violent, um, uh, incredibly violent sort of environments that, that you won't experience in kitchens and, and a system being installed in a kitchen cupboard, but it's the same quality products that lead us to the reliability. And for us, the no electronics, the reliability of the tested components, the R&D and robust um, fire testing that's gone in, not only just to test a single pan, but multi-pans, different hob types, different shutdown methods. So, so for us, it's been a, a long journey of R&D to bring this to the stage where we, we have got enough data to look at this and go, do you know what, actually, this is an incredible product. It offers real protection for, an act for a situation that actually regularly occurs um, and a lot more than people think occurs. You know, regularly we're out recharging systems that have extinguished fires on hops. So, so this is what walk through a bit of the, you say that it happens more than not in, in the stats, it's 470 a day. A day. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's a lot. Um, so just to, just to extending on what I said there about the, the components, yeah, this is from our vehicle testing, but it's the, the same product that's used in the kitchen one, the same valve, everything like that. So they've already gone through their vibration and shock tests to some extreme level, you know, 96 hours on a, uh, on a, a test bed at some horrendous sort of frequencies and accelerations. But also they've gone down to minus 40 to plus 80 and that's been cycled and then they have the corrosion and then we have to prove that you can discharge the contents. And um, yeah, there's some incredible tests that the, the product has already gone through uh, and it's the same equipment that we use in the kitchens. And this video here is just a quick snippet from the, uh, the vibration rig that we, we work with when we do our vehicle testing. And as, as the guys say, you know, what relevance does this have to, to kitchen systems? Well, as Ed just said, it's, it's we share, one of the things is in Reacton is we, to help distributors keep costs down, offer better products, offer better quality products is, the, the technology is formed around one basis, and that one basis is the valve, the, the detection system, and the discharge system. And you know what we do is we test everything to the most extreme, um, uh, most extreme test scenarios and durability testing. And obviously, that's great for us because a lot of other products have shortcuts taken on them. They're, they're cut down products because they're going to be in a kitchen cupboard. Well, that's not the, not the case with the Reactor system. So again, the, the faultless activation system where um, we don't have uh, the scenario where there's a fire and there's a fault with the system or there's a detection with an electronic system, um, there's no power. We don't have any of that. It's purely pneumatic for the kitchen, the residential kitchen system. So, you know, 
it's it, for us the simpler the better we've got one moving part the durability and the environmental testing is taking place so that's why it is the most reliable activation system in the world because you just don't have anything to go wrong it's a single point of activation so this just gives you some of the an example of that video as we just played so it just gives you an overview of that extensive testing that we do so on this this slide really it's a summary um, about what we've discussed and really people like to have a little list you know so it's essentially a, a checklist um, so if you can say that you cook with oils or fats um, you know have you ever forgotten about cooking before you know we've all done it where we've rushed into the kitchen because the smoke alarm's gone and you completely forgot that you had something on there um, or you hear a pan boil over it's so easy to forget that you've put something on um, then you know are the people in that property that are not fully trained on the you might have your fire blanket there and if you're lucky a class f fire extinguisher but have, are, are you confident that they are trained on that that's no different to for what we see in, in the vehicle sectors and, and other sectors is you know you can put a fire extinguisher on a vehicle um but nine times out of ten no one knows how to operate it and when they do operate it they operate it in an incorrect manner um so it's largely ineffective so that's you know that for me covers up why yeah and again they may if they're brave enough to go to the fire they may pick up a water one and they jet the water into the oil pan and there's plenty of videos on YouTube which will show you what happens when you put water into a, a, a very hot oil fire um, and essentially it just it creates so much steam and it pushes out all of the oil and then that ignites and it becomes this big fireball so a lot of people are too frightened to do that or they are ending up spreading the risk by putting something over the fire to try and put it out which doesn't work that catches fire it spreads the risk so a lot of people will typically try and uh, avoid that at all costs then we have a point here is do you have a walkthrough to the kitchen uh, in the kitchen in order for you to get out or your your fire exit which is very common in student accommodations and then the last point here could there be anyone in the property that may have an impairment that makes cooking a higher risk so you know in um, a lot of uh, old people's homes and things like that you know we have there's dementia and people will you know it's easier for them to be able to start uh, cooking and not remember what, what's uh, been put on and everything like that and then you have obviously the the, the alcohol introduction there with certain people that Students. Like the students, <laughs> like students. Ed said yeah. earlier about you know an actual real story that we've got there. Um, you can fall asleep and you forget that you've you've cooked uh, anything. So if you can answer yes to any one of those, then you, you really should be looking at having a, a kitchen suppression system from React on. So and then just a few sort of key takeaways here to sort of uh, give you an overview of why. Why would you want to work with React and why React is the best? The documentation is world class. You know, we pride ourselves on this and we, we make it very clear and concise. We don't take away, we don't make it simple. Uh, we, the, the actual overview isn't, um, we're not removing any of the detail, but we portray it in a very simple and easy to access uh, sort of. Uh, format and then we have the training which is online and only this week we've done some bespoke animations for a customer to teach them how to you know look after the kitchen systems and things like that so we're constantly doing these and they're as you saw earlier some world-class uh, animations that we do and i think the training side for me is, is very close to my heart um we you know, it's, it's very easy for us to talk about great systems, great nozzles, great technology, extinguishing agents, whatever you want to say. But at the end of the day, these systems are installed by human beings. And unless the human installing it has had the correct training, and not only initial training, but ongoing recertification, um, you know, the, the product could be the best product in the world installed incorrectly will be ineffective. So training for us is, is, is a good 50% of our R and D time. Um, and Ed creating the most stunning manuals with the best visuals, the best online training, the best recertification modules online, just tries, it, it makes anyone and everyone involved in the training process 
clear about what we're trying to achieve during the training. So, you know, just keep, and obviously we issue certificates at the end of all the training, so it's easy for uh, health and safety individuals, um, engineering managers to keep track of who's trained to install uh, and who's not, so. Yeah, and the thing is, it's, it's online as well. So there's, we, we try to minimize any uh, excuses for people not being able to be trained, you know, especially this is quite, a, important now with uh, a lot of the world being in lockdown you can still be trained to the same level um, remotely so uh, then we have all the R&D which we've gone through in detail throughout this uh, webinar um, but the, the last point which um, I know Ed uh, has a good case on there is that the, the people of the business yeah and, um, yeah I, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt you. I was just gonna say that for me the people side is what we pride ourselves on um, you know, Ed, for example, joined the business to make um, to make the industry a better place for the products that we sell. Um, and I think anyone, any customers that currently work for us, will will reach out to us and say that you know it's it's been a pleasurable experience dealing with Reacton because we're passionate about what we sell, but we're also really passionate about making sure that we actually provide robust protection. We're not just about selling a unit, a product to a customer. For us, we engineer the right product for the right scenario. Um, and, and rather than just, in a lot of cases, say we suppress fires, we, we work to extinguish fires. You know, our, our systems are robustly tested to work time and time and time again. And you can only achieve that greatness with the right people. Um, and, and making sure that our people on board share the company values about the protection that we offer, um, the huge trust that people place in Reacton to make sure that our products do meet the standard they need to meet and they work when they need to work. So, you know, for us, the, the people element um, is, is, is massive for us. So, yeah, again, uh, you know, after the end of this webinar with the contact details, a copy of the webinar will go out. And please engage with anyone, us, Ed, you know, either of us two, the sales team, the marketing team, and the engineering team. You know, reach out if you've got any questions about anything you've seen in the presentation that, that really that stands out and you want to engage with some, some team members. Um, and then, as we mentioned before we started the webinar, this is going to be our next one on the 12th of August uh, about the power generation. And uh, yeah, there'll be another webinar. Uh, great, great detail in there. Give people an overview of what, why you need automatic fire suppression and why automatic fire suppression is uh, the key. And you'll find, especially with the wind turbine side, the, the detection tube that Reacton uh, develops is you it, it really is the go-to product for that uh, when, when you weigh up all the reasons why it, it, it is a no-brainer that you need to have the detection tube systems in these yeah so that that link will go out with the marketing email um that follows up this just as a, a thank you for attending and, and a copy of the recording so you can watch back at this at any point with us narrating and, and share that with anyone you want um, and uh, any questions uh, there'll be a load of contact information in that so so that's really the end of, of the yeah. presentation. And uh, we've got some oh, questions, haven't we? Oh, we've got some polls, actually. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for put those up while we answer the questions. So. Yeah, so we're going to stop the screen sharing now. Just, just um, close the presentation. OK, guys. So we're just going to launch a poll now um, to everyone that's, uh, that's viewing. Um, so I'm going to hit launch poll. So I don't know, do you want to walk through that one, Ed? Um, yeah, so uh, why don't residential properties have automatic fire suppression installed in kitchens? So we've given you, uh, I think there's five options there. So just vote away, it's completely anonymous, don't, don't worry. Um, uh, and for us, this is very, uh, the, what we had from our last poll on the CNC machines was very surprising for us. And <laughs> weirdly enough, this is going exactly the same way. So. Um, but for, we're, 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 we're shared the, the poll at the end, but we'll let it run for, yeah, while well, we answer the questions. Uh, but just answer them as uh, honestly as possible. And then um, it, it's great information for us and it makes us provide more detailed and focused information for you to make it easier for you to get the information. So first question, what is the temperature rating of the detection tube? So um, temperature rating of the detection tube. So the, the rating that the tube will withstand 
uh, on a longevity point, from a longevity point of view, is well over 130 degrees Celsius in that particular environment. Um, and then uh, activation temperature is around 170 degrees, 150 degrees Celsius, depending on which tube the, the customer opts for. And that will depend on how close the hood is and how, how big the cooking application, what type of cooker you're using. So again, that's dealt with during the specification, um, specification side of, of the products. So, um, yeah, so we've got, uh, for Iraq, we'll send over some pricing. Got, got a good question there. So the marketing team will come back to you um, with uh, an introductory email and um, be able to give you all the data sheets and the specification side. So we'll get, that, we'll get the yes. marketing team to pick up on that um, with you and you'll have that um, over this afternoon. Um, can you advise with the test and inspection regime of the system and particularly the cylinder? Also, what's the shelf life of the, the 3F product? Yeah, so with, we, we have a, a really nice uh, owner's manual which gives you the, the test and inspection regime and that will have what we've done as a daily or weekly inspections of the system where you are really looking at uh, visuals uh, when you're looking at that sort of frequency. Um, Again, as we mentioned, the, the cylinder is, uh, the valve's completely stainless steel along with all the other parts. So uh, the, the, the inspections are usually visual. And then when it comes to the actual cylinder itself, they have uh, a 10 year shelf life for the cylinder, uh, but with the actual products inside, uh, we, we've brought that down to five years on there um, to keep in line with the, the actual shelf life of the 3F product once it's in that environment. And in testing, uh, we know that this is actually much longer, but again, Reactor always like to have a, uh, uh, a very conservative sort of view on things and safety in mind. And we believe when you're going to look at a system again, you, know, it, you need to know what you're doing and it needs to work when it, it's called upon. And that's where the daily checks are very important. And anyone who is involved in the, the commercial kitchens, they know that if it's not maintained, um, the systems don't detect uh, correctly, uh, especially when you look at the, some of the fusible links, they get covered up with me so quickly that they're not working that well. Um, so maintenance is extremely important, um, not as important with the, the residential side compared to the, the, the commercial kitchens, but uh, yeah, we have some really nice clear uh, precise owners uh, manuals, even animations like I mentioned earlier of what we uh, we do for a customer this week, uh, bespoke video detailing what they need to do on their daily well, inspection. Nice really. Cool. Yeah, and I think we just launched another poll which is uh, just about what you consider when selecting a fire protection system, so it's quite interesting. Um, and we're just trying to formulate different questions on each of these webinars on the previous responses, so it's quite interesting to see what what people are voting on now. Um, so that's good. Is there any more questions from anyone? Um, just pop them in the Q&A section down the bottom if you've got any. So we'll give it another five. So yeah, again, thank you to everyone. Um, thank you to everyone for attending today. I know we've got a good selection from uh, around the globe uh, at the moment, various different time scales. Some people very tired and some people just woken up. So. Um, I've got a question for nozzles. So, do you mean what nozzles do we have? Um, what nozzles do we have available, or do you mean do, does it come with nozzles? So, we'll go with both. So, yeah, the system as a package comes with um, a selection or, or our main primary nozzle, and we have some alternatives. But there's a primary class F nozzle that comes with the system, um, and again, that's designed specifically for the system. Um, it's designed for us, it's bespoke to us, uh, as Ed said, and it has the stainless steel cap that goes with it. Yeah, um, the, the, one of the unique things about uh, the, the nozzle is it has a stainless steel cap, but when that pops off, it ensures it stays away from the discharge profile. Because if anyone sees, if you've got a nozzle cap and it's just swinging in the way of the discharge, it can affect it. Um, it is minor, but again, we look at every single detail. So that's one thing that happens with the, the, the full stainless steel nozzle we have. Okay, and then we finished up that poll there. So brand reputation, um, accreditations, 
um, the price. Uh, so it's pretty evenly split between the, 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 the what to consider when selecting a fire suppression system. We put that in there because for us, it's quite interesting because the actual overall vote has averaged on almost a 50% for every question, which is where we consider the package to be. So it's things we look at like brand reputation. Does the product have the right accreditations? It's all well and good being the best product on the market, but is it affordable? Um, uh, being an automatic system, as we know, there's some applications still. So especially those in marine, it's quite traditional to see a manual-based uh, manual based detection system and discharge system, um, which often happens far too late or if at all. And obviously the extinguishing options available. So I'm going to go ahead and end that poll, but thank you everyone for putting in your votes for that. And then, so uh, yeah, just on the temperature rating, so the, the tube will um, comfortably sit at 130 degrees Celsius for its longevity, um, the specific tube we use in this kitchen rating. Um, and uh, activation is very quick on the, um, the kitchen tube that we use. And again, the tube is different depending on the, um, depending on the application. So we use a different one for vehicles, we use a different one for control panels, we use a different one for, for kitchen systems. Yeah, and uh, I can see um, we've got one at the bottom that came in before that one there, Ed, which is uh, do you determine the height of the nozzle? Is it a full solid cone? So, yeah, we have a range. Again, it's pre engineered, so you have a set range of where you can have it. Again, you know, a discharge nozzle that's only been introduced in like uh, 200 millimeters isn't going to give the same coverage if it was at sort of uh, a meter, 1.2 meters. So, we have a set range which we say is. Uh, which we say is uh, applicable. Um, it is a full solid cone, and actually uh, part of the, the, the origins of the design of the cone, uh, well, it's actually a square pattern. It's a special square discharge nozzle, and it was uh, a lot of the uh, testing and uh, origins of this nozzle were cooling uh, actual uh, steel. And when you cool steel, if you had circles, it will be overlapping and you're going to get an uneven amount of cooling in where it overlaps but where it's square you can have it exactly the right amount so it gives a uniform discharge throughout its uh, profile so uh, another question come up how can an ancillary oh, oh, my, that's live. how can an ancillary item be introduced when the system is 100 percent pneumatic and zero requires uh, basically requires zero electric to operate good question so um, what we do is the system detection and activation, as we said, is, um, is totally independent, doesn't have any power in it at all. What we then do is we interface the system with two methods. So we either use a uh, analog or, or a, yeah, it's probably the best way of saying it, a, a mechanical pressure switch, which offers a normally open and normally closed circuit. That then can feed into a relay. Um, to then activate an electronic signal, i.e. building management system, gas shutoff valve, or a relay to turn the cooker off. Um, so, so up until the point where we turn something off or we notify a building management system, everything is, does, you know, requires zero electric to operate. So it's a mechanical, a normally open or normally closed switch. Hopefully that answers um, that question. Yeah, and then we've got, is the wet chemical environmentally friendly? Yes, it is, and uh, what we're, we're not using it in its 100% form. It's actually diluted with normal water, um, and what we do is we can send over some data sheets of the, the actual uh, um, wet chemical that we're using in this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, specifically designed for class F, but can give a class A and B rating as well. So yeah, and what we'll say is, is again, if you uh, respond to the uh, email that goes out and the um, the team that will be getting in contact after the webinar to, to all the attendees today. Um, just ask for a technical data sheet of anything to do with the system, the wet chemical, the MSDS sheet for the chemical that we use, and it'll give you all the information you need. So, oh, we've got some questions coming in thick and fast now. Any limitations on piping length? For the uh, kitchen system, uh, residential kitchen system we're talking about today, um, it's probably worth saying there's no limitation on piping length given the, given the sizes that you're going to be dealing with here. It's, it's a pre-engineered system which comes with a two meter stainless steel braided hose anyway. Um, and if you don't need that much, obviously you can coil that up yeah. a bit, but uh, 
yeah, it, the piping is never really a limitation on these. Um, yeah. We've got some installations where you've got over 10 meters of discharge um, off the back of, of, of the system. And you, the detection, because of the unique properties of, of the valve and the detection tube, um, the actual um, limitation of the detection is, is you know, far beyond what you'll ever use in a, yeah. in a kitchen oh, system. Yeah. Um, what we say is we, we are extremely flexible. And if you do have a, a, a uh, application where this is the cylinders mounted 10 20 meters away all you will do is do some verifying tests to give you peace of mind um, but we, we know that there's uh, a lot of performance in the system um, we've got one there about the pre-charged localized alarm incorporated to allow for evacuation of residents we do a, uh, a battery operated beacon and sounder which is uh, easily configurable uh, well very easily uh, configurable with the system you have a pressure switch and it goes straight into that unit and that will provide uh, signals which can be customized. I think there's over 40 or 50 uh, selections of uh, sounds and strobe uh, conditions in that. So it's, uh, that's very easy for, for us to and, supply. Yeah, and again, remember it can be integrated to a, a standard building management system or a standard fire alarm that might be in the property as a zone. So it's, you yeah. know, you've got those options. Uh, is the sensing tube behind the filter or in front? Um, do you want to answer that? It could be both. But yeah, it, to be honest, it could be both because that's what I've tested for. So again, we've done tests with it behind uh, the filters and we've had it in front and really they work uh, exceptionally well in either case. And conversely, which is not always intuitive, it sometimes actually activates faster when it's behind the filter, which a lot of people wouldn't think, um, but that's because it can be the, the basically the radiated heat from the, the metal filter can actually cause it to burst quicker. So either way, so the tests are done with it in front and uh, behind the filter. Okay, so I think we're up to date with the questions. Yeah, no, it's, it's really nice yeah. to get engaging questions yeah, and definitely. it's like when you do a training course, if everyone sits there and just goes, brilliant, see you later, you, you don't feel like anyone's really been engaged and this is just really nice for us to see this so um, so um so the we've got a couple of questions here so uh about um a bank of cylinders bank outside or a kitchen nearby and this is for very large kitchens and there's another question also i'm going to make that live as well for the design residential systems can it be applied for commercial restaurant in a high rise building or mixed use building complex so today's presentation and the systems you've seen today are purely for uh, residential use however at the moment there's a development uh, there's an R&D project going on that will then convert this system into a commercial system um, that will be available um, before the end of the year um, and yes you'll be able to bank, bank cylinders together you'll be able to apply it to very large commercial kitchens um, and then the aim is is to have that um, possible you know the approval uh, yeah it'll be the LPS 1223 you know yeah. So, so that's the plan for the commercial um, uh, kitchen system, but obviously it shares again the, the same level of components and the same technology you've seen today. So, so for us, what we wanted to do is showcase this system. And as Ed said, is, is we, we have got some options for commercial kitchens, but uh, we want to be confident with the, with the LPS approval. So, um, so that, that will come later on in this year. Um, but certainly it'll be similar technology, similar principles um, without, you know, without complicating it. So that's fine. Do you want to start one? Yeah. Well, uh, so as you, uh, as we mentioned before, the, the systems are designed to be stationary for, with, with the agent in there for five years. So that, that's uh, how they're designed to be like that in an IDA idle time. Um, as long as you check that the system's got pressure, the tube, the integrity of the, the discharge hose and the nozzle is clear and free from blockages and everything like that, the system will operate as it's intended to do. And for peace of mind, when we do the discharge testing, we do one with a reduced mass testing. Um, and then in some instances, we're only using 0.8 of a kilo to put out some of these big pan fires. And, um, it, it, it's knocking it down straight away. So the, there's a lot of uh, um, reserve performance in the system. Okay. 
So again, uh, there'll be an email coming out with lots of contact details of the team, who to get in contact if you've got more questions, data sheets, if you want some more product information. Don't hesitate to ask for a demonstration system as well. We'll, well. We can quite arrange, quite quickly arrange a, uh, a sample system to come out to you so you can explore the system, see what it's about, touch and feel it. Um, and then Ed and the rest of the team are available any time to sort of take any further questions by email, chat, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, so yeah we're going to wrap up now. Um, thank you very much for attending the webinar today, guys. Really appreciate you taking time out of your, your, your busy schedules um, at the moment to, to come and listen to um, our webinar today about the residential kitchen systems. And um, we will see you in August for the wind turbine and power generation um, uh, webinar um, again we've got some great content great videos um, we're going to be featuring in that and hopefully see you all um, in that in yeah. that next webinar yeah no thank you for your attendance all the best yeah and we'll see you guys soon thank you very much cheers <laughs>